Lord Mayor and Trish for having me here and to this very gallant man who set us up tonight, even though you weren't expecting uh, to do that. Um, I am a bit of a believer in more is more, especially when it comes to showing images of our uh, by feminists because I feel that the love of this work doesn't get seen as much as it should. So I have a hundred images for you tonight. Um, so I'll be going through them very quickly in some cases, and I don't have time to describe a lot of them, and because what I'm dealing with a lot of this work is very um, process-based, it's not just an image you can see. What I've done is I've cheated a bit, I've included some um, written descriptions after the images, so that will kind of keep the pace going. Um, so, Shortly after giving birth and realizing that her time in the studio was going to be severely curtailed, in 1969, a New York artist, Meryl Lady Nucleum, wrote Manifesto for Maintenance Art. Subtitled the proposal for an exhibition of care, and apparently penned in one sitting, Eukely's polemic contrasted the death instinct, with which she equated with the avant-garde, to the life instinct which she linked to everyday maintenance activities. Highlighting the unreconstructed gender politics that dogged even the most progressive bohemian and lesbian circles, UK posed the sour ball of every revolution. After the revolution, he go to pick up the garbage on Monday morning. Her exhibition would be divided into three sections, personal, general, and earth maintenance each manifesting the links between the avant-garde, maintenance labour, and the social and environmental implications of waste. Taking a leap out of Zolman's just book, she declared that from henceforth, everything I say is art is art, everything I do is art is art. Quote, I do a hell of a lot of washing, cleaning, cooking, renewing, supporting, preserving, etc. Also, up to now, separately, I do art. Now I will simply do these maintenance everyday things and flush them up to consciousness, exhibit them, and art. I will live in a museum and do as I customarily do at home with my husband and my baby for the duration of the exhibition. Right? Or if you don't want me around at night, I could come in every day and do all these things as public art activities. I will sweep and wax the floors, dust everything, wash the floors, i.e. floor paintings, dust work, soap sculpture, wall paintings, cook, invite people to eat, make agglomerations and disposals of, and dispositions of all functional refuse. The exhibition area might look empty of art, but it will be maintained in full public view. And this is in capital. My working will be the work. So it would take four years for Lucy Lippard to invite Meryl Lady Rupin to participate in an exhibition of women artists called Circa 7500 for you, Kelly, to realise the first part of this exhibition. And the rest of her compositions she would work out subsequently in a self designed career as artist in residence unpaid at the New York Department of Sanitation. But in the meantime, you Kelly kept a log and later created images that systematically recorded her daily activities as homekeeper, artist, and eventually mother of three children. So come 1973, for the exhibition, 7500, circa 7500, at the World's Without an AM, she created actions over two days, a Friday and a Sunday. No events were scheduled for Saturday so that she could observe the Sabbath, and, and one critic has posited her uh, religious observance as very key to her interest in ritual. So for the project Transfer, this image, UK has appropriated the museum's most popular artifact, an Egyptian mummy, an object of course of both reverence and taboo, once abject, now treasured. Collapsing low status janitorial work with high status curatorial work, she dusted the tree <coughs> which has the mummy and displayed it and displayed and displayed the tree along with the rag as what she calls a dust painting, with of course a reference there to Duchamp. She then handed the rag, which she had stamped as an artwork, together with the cleaning fluid, to the conservator, because by now the glass case, classified as an artwork, 
could only be cleaned by him. Later that day, Ukele took the metal keys held by the gallery guard to secure the museum's main entrances and went through and, and did the same room after room for designated periods. Notices explained that an artwork was in process, some visitors stayed to watch, others left disgruntled at the intrusion. Later, she did the same thing to the gallery offices and the museum staff reacted much less sympathetically, running from their desks, panicked and outraged as she locked their offices behind them. So when she came back on a Sunday, she performed her now iconic uh, washing activities, each lasting four hours. In the morning, she washed the stairs the main entrance. In the afternoon, the marble floor of Avery Court, aided by water and divers, apparently the preferred conservation tool of the museum staff. She went on to realise other aspects of this proposed exhibition, um, which works through the environmental implications of our attitudes towards waste and the people who handle them, uh, dealing with what the anthropologist Mary Douglas has called matter as a place. So at the New York Department of Sanitation, uh, in a role that she has described as a complex fusion of outsider independent artists and insider long-term fixture of the department, she initiated touch sanitation, uh, a project which took place um, over the course of several years for which she clocked in with and worked alongside the city's 8,500 sanitation workers, facing each one, shaking their hands and saying thank you for keeping New York City alive. In a subsequent work called Social Mirror, which you can see here, um, she covered a garbage truck in mirrors so, uh, and debuted this piece as part of the street parade in New York. So the rubbish is reflected back to us recruiting sanitation as a metaphor for symbiosis. In defining the social term that has prevailed in recent art, a long shadow has been cast by relational aesthetics. The French critic and curator Nicolas Borrelard's essay collection that was published in 1998 and translated into English four years later. Bringing together socially based art by figures ranging from Rick Chermanic, Hanson Huller, Philip Pierre Huy, Philip Perrello, Dominique Mondale, Gabriel Orster, and many others, this slim volume has become a lightning rod for debates about, about participation and social interaction in art. While suggesting that the artist he brings together, quote, in no way draws sustenance from any interpretation of this or that past aesthetic movement, how could that even be possible, one wonders. Gloria nonetheless aligns them with the theories of political philosophers, including Marx, Althusser, and Moore and Guitari, as well as avant garde artists like Duchamp, Robert Matter Clark, Onkwara, Dan Graham, and Daniel Buren. Yet nowhere in this broad lineage does Borio even mention the foundational role played by Mary Lady New Kelly or any other artist informed by feminism. On the contrary, his insistence on the artist as an unmarked and gender and as unmarked and gender neutral epitomizes a universally civilizing position that sees no place for and appears to have learned nothing from sexual politics. Borio's humanism prompts him to deny artworks specific local personal as well as collective demands. So for example, in his reading of Felix Gonzalez Torres, much of his work was fueled by his rage against government and corporate inaction in the face of the AIDS crisis that had disseminated his communities, led to the death of his lover and was fast destroying him, Borio celebrates him for his ability to sidestep community or identification to get to the heart of human experience. Apparently, seeing any forms of social oppression other than class as substitutionalism, Elsewhere in relational aesthetics, Borio dismisses feminism and anti-race projects as mere propaganda. He fails to see how the unmarked universal position is always inflected towards the male, a gender blindness that has unfortunately affected many of his interlocutors. So the British critic Claire Bishop, while taking issue with many of his assertions, nonetheless reinforces his interest in anti-feminism in the 2006 anthology Participation, 
which likewise ignores the germinal world played by feminist, socially-based artists. So of the 13 contributions, contributors to her book, five are women but not one highlights feminism as a distinct and important trajectory. Of course, disregarding feminist artists' contribution to 20th century art is nothing new and should really hardly surprise us. But their absence from the hardly canon of relational aesthetics is particularly problematic, as this is one of the fields that feminist orientated artists have been most active. Frustrated with limiting conceptions about the art objects as autonomous, many feminists made the enactment of power relations, intimacies and antagonisms, ambivalences, uh, limits of, of the self and society, both the subject and the form of their work. Largely excluded from the art market, they gravitated towards time and process-based work that resisted commodification. So, I want to just look at a few of the precedents that I think are important to acknowledge. Um, and these are really starting in the era before women's liberation became a distinct movement and of course the change in the art world. Um, and at this time, artists such as Alice Kingwell's probably wouldn't categorize themselves as, as, as feminists, although their work can very much be read in a feminist light and I know that subsequently, for example, I believe she has embraced that categorization. Um, so, Alison Knowles, working as part of Fluxus, um, inflected that group's notion of art as an instruction or a recipe, um, something initiated by the artist that others could then interpret and in the item, um, by giving it a kind of gendered, gendered inflection on every everyday task. And I'm just going to put up this description so I don't have time to describe everything. Um, so this is her piece, Make a Salad, um, a very everyday activity, clearly. And as, as, as Helen Molesworth um, highlights in her commentary on the work, Mills is not simply challenging the conventional isolation of art from life, the reversal applied to Mills' performance practice. She also performs against all, all concert decorum with her baby and her. Um, another important Flutus artist and the prominent artist in Tokyo before she moved to the US, and long before she got together with John Lennon, Yoko Ono staged this uh, iconic work called Cut Piece. Um, initially in, in Tokyo, subsequently in New York and London, uh, Ono kneeled on stage, placing a pair of scissors before her, which audience members unprompted um, used to cut away her clothes. Ono's passivity became a provocation, a blankness on which the public projected and enacted their fantasies. Um, and the different responses of the audiences were, were key. So, for example, while in Tokyo, audience members were reticent when Ono performed the piece at the Destruction of Art Symposium in London several years later, the, ground, the crowd grew so aggressive that police were called in to protect her. Um, that's another example of her instruction work. And this idea of art as an instruction is something that can be unpacked and interpreted as a and run through a lot of the work that I'm going to highlight today. Um, long before Borio defined relational aesthetics, the Brazilian artist Ligia Clark made what she called relational objects, propositions which heightened participants' awareness of their bodies by restricting or submerging the visual sense senses. She saw her work as a form of individual and collective therapy, a springboard for the freedom of the spectator author. Um, against the backdrop of military dictatorship in Brazil and uh, as well as in late 60s, early 70s in Paris. And um, having started working in painting and sculpture, she ended her career just working with audience members as, as a client, really in a sort of therapeutic um, partnership. 